When people think about warfare, tanks, fighter jets and rifles come to their mind. Which is faster, which has a bigger caliber and so on. Troop numbers too are a big indication of military power, right? Well, sure. But another thing is commonly disregarded. The ability to find, identify and then quickly prosecute the target. Ideally not just one target, but potentially thousands of targets nearly all at the same time. That need became obvious in Ukraine, and it will be indispensable in any possible US-China war. That's something that until very recently was simply not possible. But Project Maven is all about exactly that. Maven Smart System is in use with the US military right now. It was used for targets in Ukraine and for hunting Houthi missile launchers. Targeting revolution is here. The AI-assisted warfare is here. And there will be no going back. Throughout history, it took time to survey an area, to find contacts, to identify them as targets and precisely locate them. To keep tracking them, conveying the information to a friendly unit or a weapon designed to engage them. During much of the Cold War, that time was often measured in days, when it came to targets beyond the very front line. Technological advances gradually brought that down to hours. Depending on how far the target was from the closest eligible firing platform, it could even be a single hour, by the time 1991 Gulf War came. In the 1990s and 2000s, it generally took 15 to 20 minutes to process recon info from, say, a U-2 spy plane and provide targets. But there were other needs as well. Time to get a firing platform in firing range, and even time to explain the crew of a fighter jet, for example, where exactly the target is relative to them, so they can lock onto it. That alone took about 10 minutes on the average. Programming a cruise missile took time as well back then. As the 2000s came, all that time required got compressed. We are now at a point where it may take mere minutes from finding a contact to ordering a strike. If the firing platform is close by, the whole kill chain can be finished within 5 or 10 minutes. But for future wars, that may not be enough. And crucially, all this mentioned so far could not be done at mass scale. It took several people in a targeting unit to process just one target at a time. Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003 had a targeting center with over 2,000 personnel, enabling simultaneous processing and targeting of hundreds of targets. But for future wars, that may be an order of magnitude inadequate. Simply making larger targeting centers and hiring more people can help to an extent, but it is not an optimal solution. That's why the US military has been working on something new. In 2020, the US Army started testing a novel system. When there's a battlefield, many recon systems are used to collect many snapshots, videos and various synthetic depictions of potential enemy activities and potential targets. This time, those recon data feeds were also analyzed by software trained to handle such material. It wasn't just a simple database kind of software, correlating new imagery with imagery in the database. Software was programmed to interpret what it saw, to try to identify it, even if imagery wasn't perfect, and to suggest targets. Human operators were still in the loop. In tests, once the software suggested the target, humans were there to confirm the prompt. Then the software sent a message to a HIMARS launcher to engage the target. The software was part of the US military's Project Maven. US DOD describes it like this. Establishment of an algorithmic warfare cross-functional team. Current name of the system is Maven Smart System. Basically, think of it similar to a mass face recognition software. The same way that would handle video feeds of hundreds of people at once, say at an airport, and to try to identify wanted people among those while tracking them. Maven relies on a myriad of data streams and decides if something is a house or a tree, a commercial truck or a special military truck, a tank or some other piece of weaponry if it's moving or stationary, if it's real or an inflatable decoy. Over the years, it got fed millions of reference points in various recon environments. It's been programmed to make guesses and to provide likelihoods. 
It has been integrated into the Battlefield command interface and has been fed with various other data as well, for example to offer a suggestion how to best deal with a target. It's a Pentagon initiative stemming from at least April 2017, designed to have, quote, people and computers working symbiotically to increase the ability of weapon systems to detect objects. That's according to the project leader, Colonel Drew Cooker. By 2018, Pentagon started working with Google on Project Maven. But as thousands of Google workers protested against working to create warfare technology, that cooperation quickly fell through. That same year, the US DoD basically classified the program, saying that public information about Maven's capabilities was too sensitive, that it could help US adversaries. Yeah, that basically means China. Since then, many companies are known to be working with the Pentagon on the project. Palantir Technologies seems to be the lead, organizing the data fusion platform. But various more known firms like Amazon, L3 Harris, Maxar, Microsoft and others are part of the project. By 2020, Maven was tested with actual weapons involved. Various weapon platforms were tested. Fighter jets, bombers, drones and so on. Allegedly at some point, College students were hired to label over 4 million images of military hardware to help train the AI algorithm. As the US was evacuating its forces from Afghanistan, Maven's smart system was also used. It combined data feeds from sensors tracking aircraft, tracking logistics vehicles, surveying the surroundings for threats and showing locations of important personnel, like specific generals. Maven Smart System shared all that data with hundreds of people which were then logged in. Initially, the Maven system was handling only video feeds, but by today, it's been trained to handle more than just optical sensors. So thermal sensor data feed is now part of it, as are synthetic images made by radar sensors. Non-visual information can also be handled, like geolocation tags from social media. A Bloomberg article mentioned an Army senior targeting officer, Joey Temple. Initially, he thought the system would not be effective and would cause a greater workload than it's worth. Later, he was quoted as estimating that his small unit could process and approve 80 targets within an hour using Maven. Without it, they would otherwise process and approve only 30 targets per hour. Those figures later got much better. When Russia attacked Ukraine in 2022, Maven was used in large-scale warfare conditions. Bloomberg said that unnamed US officials admitted Maven helped process visual information gathered by satellites, which was then handed off to Ukrainian forces. Allegedly from the start of the war in Ukraine, Maven had 50 rounds of improvements added to it. Remember that bit where we said Maven can work with synthetic radar images? That's hugely important. The US already has access to many such satellites. They can see during the night, they can see through clouds and so on. Since this year, US military has been launching more and more of its super important GMTI satellites, or ground moving target indicator satellites. Those have radars which can automatically detect movement. And even when they can't identify contact on their own, they can keep track of a target while other higher resolution satellites are tasked with identification. GMTI from space is such a massive change in warfare that the US doesn't like to talk about it, especially since China has been testing similar concepts since the late 2010s. One can only imagine what sort of treasure trove of data such satellite constellations provide to the MAVEN targeting system. Basically, all those issues the military had with kill chains in previous decades might be largely solved, with the only limitation being physical distance from weapon to target and time needed to cover said distance. Anyway, in 2022, US National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which analyzes imaging and digital mapping, took over Project Maven, signaling the project was fairly mature. It also got changed from a developmental project to an actual military program. Maven gathers data sent to it and its AI identifies points of interest. It can also provide various overlays over a battlefield, much like in a game where areas can be marked with colored outlines, marking potential targets, or marking friendly forces, or marking civilian areas such as hospitals. Human operators then pick and choose which target to prosecute. The US keeps using and perfecting its AI tools. 
Early this year, it was reported that AI was used to identify targets for airstrikes in the Middle East. That includes finding Houthi missile launchers in Yemen. However, the system is still not perfect. Shiler Moore, chief technology officer for US Central Command, said that in 2023 tests, the AI often did not perform as well as humans when it came to proposing the best order of attack against multiple targets or which weapon would be best to use against a certain target. That's likely because such tasks have simply not been worked on as much as identification. The project started with identification as its priority. Given enough time and data input into the AI, Binkov believes those areas will greatly improve as well. But even identification still has its issues. Colonel Joseph O'Callaghan, fire support coordinator in an army's unit testing MAVEN, suggested that the results were not the same for object identification in desert-like Middle East and in other areas, presumably ones with more foliage, like in Ukraine. O'Callaghan said that human analysts will get the target identification right 84% of the time, while MAVEN will currently do it in 60% of the cases. The AI can sometimes confuse vehicles with trees or other geographical features. Tanks, which are fairly specific, should be easier to identify than trucks, for example. O'Callaghan said snow can seriously mess with identification, for example pushing the accuracy down to under 30% of the cases. Mistakes are sure to be made. Oftentimes decoys will fool analysts, be they human or AI. But AI identification and targeting offers two crucial things, speed and volume. In 2020, when Maven was first used in an exercise called the Scarlet Dragon, it was compared to a standard identification process. For an unknown reason, the standard process struggled against a test object, requiring 12 hours to find it, identify it and target it. Maven did it in less than a minute. A CSET report on Project Maven by Emilia Probasco said that the goal of the project was to help commanders process a thousand tactical decisions per hour. The report also pointed out that the US targeting unit in Iraq in 2003, which we already mentioned, used over 2,000 personnel, but that Maven could manage the same workload with just 20 people, aided by AI. That's a hundredfold improvement. That volume is likely to be absolutely crucial in the future. For example, imagine if yesterday's targeting units were to do the task the AI-assisted targeting units will be doing tomorrow. Let's say we have two warring sides, one using legacy targeting with 2,000 people. The other side has the same 2,000 people, but aided by AI, achieving the same volume of targeting as if it had 200,000 personnel. The legacy targeting side would simply not be competitive. Imagine US not going that route, but China embracing AI targeting fully. That's dozens of brigades worth of people doing an obsolete job, instead of being assigned to more productive tasks. Also, logistical issues of running such huge offices 24-7 would be massive, and it's plausible more and more targeting cells would not scale up linearly and would not be equally effective when there are 10 such teams, compared to when there are a thousand such teams. Compared to that, Maven could provide targeting capabilities equal to a 200,000 mega unit with probably 2,000 people supervising the AI. And that's just the AI-assisted targeting of today, which is merely years old. The speed at which various AI systems have been improving in mere half a decade is breathtaking. It's virtually guaranteed that AI targeting by 2030 is going to be far more capable than Maven is today probably blowing past all the figures we mentioned in this video. The US won't be alone in this race though. China is also exploring similar options for AI use. Chinese companies have lots of experience with object and face recognition, and it remains to be seen if that will translate into potent targeting capability. So far China doesn't seem to have put the same number of GMTI satellites in orbit, so for now, the US may be ahead in at least some parts of the entire kill chain sensor and processing capabilities. And while there is likely never going to be 100% precision when it comes to identification, even 80 or 90% identification rate will be a massive deal in a total world war, 
when coupled with thousands of similar targets identified at the same time, allowing all those attacks at nearly the same time. Cheap, mass-produced missiles will be the other part of that equation, and both US and China are probably working to leverage mass commercial industries, making missile stockpiles of today seem minuscule. Right now, the US officials say there are no plans to let AI decide whether to actually fire weapons. But if there's a world war, each side might seek to squeeze every second out of its kill chain and get those weapons on targets more quickly than the enemy. So who knows what the future will bring. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.